Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna break down for you the main beat of Joji's TikTok, and I'm gonna show you how I recreated this thing from scratch. I wanted to remake this whole beat because I wanted to break it down and understand what was going on there rhythmically because there are lots of rhythmic elements that are doing very interesting things. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the main beat sounds like this. and then repeats. So it actually has less elements than I thought it would have. So here are the drums. And the other stuff that I couldn't figure out what it was, was actually samples from a clock. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure because I don't have the actual samples and I don't know where they came from. But to me, they sound like samples from one of those big clocks that have like the thing moving in the middle. And I looked up samples from a clock and I tried to process it as best as I could to replicate it. And this is what it sounds like. And together they sound like this. Very interesting. And I'm gonna show you rhythmically what's going on in just a minute. And the guitars, I actually recorded the guitars and I'm not sure if they're using a seal string. It sounds like it's still a string, but I only have a, a nylon string and it sounds like this. That's literally the loop. I just played that and I looped it and it sounds like this. It literally just has some EQ. Compression. and a little bit of reverb. And there's a second guitar and it only plays one note and it sounds like this. Amazing. <laughs> and I could have sampled it, but I, I just wanted to do the whole take and just play those two notes. So the harmony, the two notes together <laughs> sound like this. And remember, this is a four bar loop. So every third bar of the loop on the fourth beat, you hear that second note. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, in the four of the third bar beat four. <laughs> Here's with the metronome. And so how did I figure this out? So in the first track, as you can see, I have the song. <laughs> this is TikTok. And this was a very helpful visual help. I didn't realize how much I would be looking at the waveform. At first I listened to the song and I used a metronome in my phone and I tapped along to figure out the tempo. I'm not gonna play the song right now because I don't wanna get demonetized. I mean, it's not like I'm making any money with this video anyways, but in the future, I hope I'll be able to monetize this video. So I'm not gonna play the original song, but you can get an idea listening to the one I made. And that ended up being 161 BPM. And at first I had aligned the first beat of the song with the first beat of second measure because I like having a little bit of space in the first measure so I can count in. But it turns out that the beginning of the song is just chopped. You can't hear the very beginning of the song for some reason, I don't know why. So I align another beat later on and now the whole song is perfectly in time at 161 BPM. But 
the first beat is not in the first beat because it's chopped, I don't know why. Looking at the waveform, it's really easy to see where the bass drum is because the waveforms are clearly fatter and more thick than the rest. Those are your kicks. So let's just listen to the kick. Let me solo the kick. And pay attention to where those beats fall. You can literally see where the kick is. And that's very helpful when you're listening to it and also looking at what it looks like. <laughs> so as you can see here in the first measure, we have the kick on beat one and on the second half of beat two. So it's one and it's in the one and the end of the second beat. <laughs> Let's listen to it with the click track. And I just went in to my MIDI editor and I placed the first one on the first beat and the second one right here in between the two and the three. And I was going measure by measure because I don't have the best ear and I don't have the best like musical memory. So I have to go bit by bit. I have to go figuring out little bits of information at a time because I'm stupid. And we don't have any bass drum in the second measure and it comes back in the third measure. I know it's confusing because it says four, but remember we're starting on measure two, so this is the third measure. And the bass drum is on beat one and beat four. Here it gets a little bit more complicated. We get the bass drum in the two and on the second beat of the three and then it comes back in the first beat of the repetition. So really the kick drum is coming back every beat and a half. So here, one and a half, and then one and a half, and here's our repetition of the whole beat. And at the end, it doesn't look the same because here's where you get Joji saying, yeah, and then the sample from that old song. And the snare drum was a little bit more complicated because it's very subtle. It, it sounds very thin and it sounds very similar to the clock samples. So it you can get them confused very easily. But if we look at the waveform, you can see this long skinny lines. There's one here, here, here. That is your snare. So if we listen to it and we look at those long waveforms, And again, my version sounds different and the snare is very different sounding from the clock samples. It's way easier to tell it apart from everything else. But that was where the waveform really saved my ass. And now the clock samples were a little bit more complicated and you can also see them in the waveform. They are the, the little hits that you see in between everything else. They're not as tall as the snare and they're not as fat as the kick. And if you think about it, a clock kind of has like two different sounds or two different pitches, if you will, tick and talk. <laughs> so I was listening to the song and it does sound like it has two different drums. It's a higher one and a lower one. And I was also listening to that recording of a clock that I downloaded and it does sound like two different sounds. So I took two that I really liked and I have them in different channels and I'm using the Studio One sampler. I'm gonna solo it. So I have both of the samples in different samplers and they are both going into a bus where I'm processing them even further. But let's listen to them dry. And the EQ that I'm using is just a high pass and just a little bit of a low pass just to clean up the high end. it creates more space for the kick drum. And so I'm adding retro color for distortion.
to make it sound more lo-fi and I'm adding compression. and reverb. That's always so much fun, you know, transforming sounds like this. And all of the rhythm together sounds like this. And now we add the guitars. And the mix is very minimal. I'm not trying to make it exactly the same, but I, I am trying to make it sound somewhat good at least. Oh, my master chain, how could I be so rude? I'm only using a compressor. and L1 to make it louder. That's it, I'm not really doing much processing and I'm not trying to get it 100% accurate. And for me, I always really enjoyed theory classes where we were trained in rhythms and how to identify them by hearing them and repeating rhythms and polyrhythms. All of that for me is very interesting. So, and here you have some rhythm elements that play every beat and a half and others that also play every beat and a half, but it's not synchronized with that other thing. So it kind of sounds like you have triplets on top of a straight 4-4 but it's not quite that, it's combinations of different stuff and it sounds really cool. And I think it's a very interesting choice how they have this very rich rhythm part, but they also have this very simple guitar part. I think that if they had something that's more complicated musically in the melody or the harmony, it would be way too busy because the rhythm is already so busy. So it's a very cool contrast between something that's rhythmically very complicated, but melodically it couldn't be any simpler. Whoever came up with that, that's really smart. And that's all I have for you today. Just like in all of my recent videos, I have to remind you about my video editing class, which is now live on Skillshare. If you are a beginner and you want to learn how to edit videos, I recommend that you start with DaVinci Resolve, which is a free professional video editing program. And in my class, I teach you from scratch what you need to make any kind of video that you wanna make. And if you click the link down in the description, you'll get 14 days of Skillshare Premium for free so that you can watch my class or anything else you want. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.